Hey y'all, how you doing? In this video, we're finally going to get to talk about principal component analysis. So this is one of my favorite topics in data science for various reasons. One, just because it's so applicable and so useful in the real world. Uh, second one is because it brings together so many of the mathematical foundations that we've been talking about building up in previous videos. Now we finally get to put them all to work in an actual data science machine learning context. Okay. Um, I thought about how to structure the principal component videos. I think uh, what I want to do is this video will be a high level explainer of principal component analysis. So don't worry about having watched any of the math theory videos um, because we won't get into that in this particular video. We will get into that in the next video, which will be kind of a medium level overview of what is principal component analysis mathematically. Okay, so let's get right into it for this high level explainer video. The context, as always, we're going to provide a context so it's not just math. We have this beautiful cat, and we are cat researchers, so we care a lot about various things about cats. For the past, you know, 10 years, we have only thought about the weight and length of a cat. So is it a fat or skinny cat? Is it a long or short cat? But all of a sudden, we have a breakthrough, and we now care about, possibly care about, purr frequency. So how loud is the purring of the cat? Is it super loud or is it quiet? Um, things like that. So let's say we gather up all of our, our cats and we measure their length, their weight, and their purr frequency and plot it on this three-dimensional um, setup right here. So we have weight here, we have length here, and purr frequency as the z-axis. So you'll notice on this chart that purr frequency ends up being usually zero or maybe a little bit positive, but it's never very large compared to the magnitude of length and weight. So what that basically means geometrically is that all of our cats kind of fall on the xy or weight length plane. So there's not a lot going on in the z direction. And this is where one application of principal analysis comes in, uh, principal component analysis comes in. Because in this case, we have in our system uh, basically a column for the per frequency variable. But since it's basically zero or close to zero, we don't really need it. We don't lose a lot by just ignoring that column. So in this case, we would kind of want to remove that column. We want to reduce the dimensionality of our space. This is a term you're going to hear a lot in regards to principal component analysis. You have a high dimensional space. In this case, it's just three, not super high. But we want to reduce that dimension so that we can get better data storage, we can get better computational time on our data, and various considerations like that. So in this case, we'd like to uh, take our three-dimensional space and kind of put it onto a two-dimensional space instead, because that's all we really need. We're not losing a lot by, um, by ignoring that dimension. Right? So I want to get a kind of a running list going of applications of PCA. So one will be dimensionality reduction. So this is the application we saw here. Uh, there are going to be a second and a third one as well. A second one would be data visualization. So that's going to be a big one too. Imagine instead of just three things about cats, we're way in the future where we have a hundred different variables about cats that we care about or potentially care about. So obviously, um, I don't know how to plot in a hundred dimensions. I don't know if you can, but I can't currently draw in a hundred different directions. So the most we can draw as, as three-dimensional beings is basically in a three-dimensional plane. So it would be great if we had something like five dimensions, if we could somehow figure out how to get that down to three key directions that kind of capture most of our data. Maybe we lose a little bit of data, because as always, going from a higher dimensional to lower dimensional space, you are going to lose a little bit of data. But that is just a fact. It's a matter of is that a uh, trade-off we're willing to make in order to be able to plot the data in three dimensions and show cool visualizations to all of the people who care about cats. Um, so that's another consideration, is data visualization. So the last consideration we'll talk about, uh, application of principal component analysis, will be uh, feature extraction. So feature extraction. Hopefully you guys can see that. A little messy, but it says feature extraction. So this is kind of getting to the meat of what PCA actually does. So let's say we have 10 different variables about cats. We have their weight, we have length, we have per frequency, we have their hair color, we have uh, various attributes, right? It's possible that a couple of these attributes are just combinations of the other attributes. Um, for example, it's possible that weight and length might be um, tied to the body mass index of the cat, for example. So it's possible that body mass index, weight, and length are not all necessary. Maybe we just need any two of them and we can derive the third one, in which case we don't need to bother storing that third variable because it's just extraneous. It's just telling us stuff we can already derive from the other two variables, right? So this is where principal component analysis comes in, is it helps us identify 
those cases where a certain variable or a collection of variables are not really independent. They are just kind of combinations of variables that we already have, linear combinations of variables that we already have. Therefore, we are safe to just get rid of those. So that's another case where it helps us to shrink the dimensionality of our data without really losing any information. Okay, so that's kind of the crux of what principal component analysis is. So that's really it for this video. That's the crux of what principal component analysis does. It takes a high dimensional space and applies various transformations onto it to get it to a lower dimensional space such that this lower dimensional space still captures as much of the dynamics in the original space as we can, okay? And that, that transformation will be more clear in the next video when we talk about how do we actually go about transforming a high dimensional space into a lower dimensional space. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video where we talk about the actual nitty gritty math behind principal component analysis. Until next time.